All right, let's take a look at the what is a sweet spot trade. It's one of our top setups in the room to watch for and how do we look for it, okay? So this is a very leading indi uh, indicator to find out when the market could possibly go vertical. So let me show you a sell setup and then let me show you a buy setup. And we're going to go over this today. We have um, the Fed minutes come out at 2 p.m. today, Fed minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So heads up on that. So what we want to try to find is we want to try to find when the S&P or any market is going to go vertical, meaning we're going to try to find where we're going to get into these setups, get into a high probability setup where we have a defined stop and a defined entry for a possible nice vertical move. So this is our slingshot trade that we've done for years. And I call it a, a slingshot, a, uh, I call it a sweet spot slingshot trade. So but I've been nicknaming it a sweet spot trade because we're trying to find when the market's moving down hard like this or moving up hard, which I'll show you in a second, I'm trying to find the spot right in the middle of the trend or when the, tr the mar market's starting to trend hard, find out where we can get into the market where the market has speed. And speed is where we're going to benefit as traders because that's where we get our targets off with smaller risk and larger potential of a run. So we have a dual trend filter and this is the easiest way to look at this. Uh, the dual trend filter has nine components built into it. Of those nine components, those nine components all have to agree, or these filters have to agree, if these two trend dots are going to turn red, red together for sells, or green, green for buys. So we have two, two trend filters built into the system. We have, let me get this as white, let me make this larger so I can point this out. This is a very, very simple way how to look at the market, but very, very powerful indicator to use because it gets you on the right side of the trend. So we have a zone. You look at these two dots. That are, they run parallel to each other. This is called my zone trend. All right. We've tested this for the last 30 years on the S&P to be the best optimal zone to reverse price and cause trend in the direction of the overall trend of the market. So you can see if it's red, these two smaller dots, if they're red, we're looking for a downtrend, meaning we're looking for shorts. Now I call it a dual trend filter because our inner dots here, this is our proprietary Rinko bar type that I created. So I created this bar type. And this bar type is called our Sim Rinko. And the same way we look at the the parallel zone trend will look at the Simrinko. If it's red, we're looking to short, and green, we're looking to buy. Now, here's what we want to do. We want to see when the dual trend filter, both the zone trend and our proprietary Simrinko, are the same color. So if they're red, red, meaning they're on top of each other, red, 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 we're looking for shorts only. Now if they're green, green like over here, we look for buys only. Green zone and green Simrinko. Now when the market becomes in a transition phase or a chop phase, you'll see that it was green, green, my zone was green, my Simrinko candles were green. The first red candle that fires off, not candle, but the first red dot that fires off, this tells you that you're in a transition phase. So this tells me that I'm in a position where the market's going to try to reverse, right there. That lets me know that I'm ready to change gears and I'm trying to look for a short position in the market. Okay, now there's specific setups we look for. Now this is directly, I'm going to go over the sweet spot trade only today. Tomorrow I'm going to go on, on a video on how to look for momentum setups and 
also fill your trades. But let's just stick with the, the sweet spot trade because we had over 40 of them last week alone, sweet spot trades. And these are the trades that like to go vertical. So right when you have an opposite color dot that comes in where they don't agree, this becomes a chop zone. Green, red, that's a chop zone until we turn red, red. Once it turns red, red, which it does here, that's a transition phase. So this phase between that dot and this dot, the market is transitioning. The market's in a transition phase. Or it can be in a chop phase, and a chop can last a longer time than this, which I'll show you. And then we start our trend. So right when we turn red, red, we're looking for shorts only. Now when a sweet spot trade comes up, it comes up when a couple parameters agree. First, we have to be red, red on our trend filter that has nine parameters built into it when they both agree that we're looking for shorts. But what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the first opposite color candle or Rinko to come in and close. Right when that first opposite color candle comes in and closes, we're going to look for the market to hold structure. Now what structure is, is my Simrinko bars. You see how it sets lower highs, lower high dots, lower high dots, lower high dots, lower high dots. If price comes up and gets a green reversal bar like this, now we have an active sweet spot trade set up that's on deck. So what I did at 1014 yesterday, as soon as this bar printed, I typed in the room, sweet spot on deck. What a sweet spot is, we're looking for a, if you, in terms of a baseball terms, we're looking for a home run hit. We're looking to hit a triple or we're looking for a home run. If we're looking for a normal V top or V bottom, we're looking for singles and we're looking for doubles in baseball terms. So we're looking for a home run hit on this when I type out a sweet spot trade. We're looking for the market to move. Right? We're not talking about one, two points. This will move 10 points. Sometimes it'll move 20. Sometimes it'll move 30. We've seen these move all the way up to 60 points. So we're looking for a, a drastic possible vertical move in the market. So when this comes up and we get a green reversal, what you're going to do is as we're ticking back up, as long as we don't close above this structure by more than two candles, if it does not close more than two candles above this structure dot and gives us a red bar reversal that closes, that is your entry. So as soon as this shown that we came up and did not close above my structure dots by more than two candles in reverse, there's your entry. So the entry was 56.25.50 short. Now your stop, this is a 20 Rinko bar size. Your stop is going to be between 15 to 20 ticks, depending how you want to do it. Some traders even go lower. But I like between 15 to 20 ticks, totally up to you. Let's just use the high of the bar as an example for a hard stop. Your entry, let's say you have a 15 tick stop in the middle of this candle, or a 10 tick stop, let's say the middle of this candle, sorry, 10 tick stop in the middle of this candle. or a 12 tick stop, or a 15 tick stop, or 15, doesn't matter. It, I like between 15 to 20. You can get away with the 12, sometimes even a 10, because the market doesn't like to retrace more than that when it runs on a sweet spot. But the bottom line is, for example, to show you where a hard stop can be placed, the maximum stop is 20 tick stop above the high of that candle. That's a maximum stop you should have. So the entry, once it comes in at 56.25.50, we start rolling down, right? Then you can use your break-even plus one feature. A lot of you use, when you hit your second target, you go break-even. You let the runner run. The market got down as low as 14, 
<clears throat> and the entry was 25. It was over a 10-point play. That's called a sweet spot setup. Now, that's a sell. And what a buy looks like, let's take a look at a buy. This is what a buy looks like. Now, a buy looks like this. So I did the same thing the day before. I said at 1.26 p.m., I said possible sweet spot on deck. Again, before this happened. These are leading indicators. This is not after the fact. You can see these way before they happen. Why did I say possible sweet spot trade? Well, just like we talked about we're looking for short setups when it's red, red. When our dual filter is green, green, let's take a look at it. We're looking for only buy setups. We're not looking to counter trend trade the market. We're looking to trade retracements with trend. So once again, if we look at this zone, this is my outer zone that we've tested for 30 years to reverse price. This is my proprietary Rinko, Sim Rinko bar type that sets these higher lows. So after we turn, go from a transition phase, the transition phase was here. We turned the first Green dot from being red, red was here. It didn't turn green, green to there. So that's your transition phase. I'll show you how to how we can take this on tomorrow's video, a failure trade, take this move up. We're not going to look at that right now. We're only going to concentrate on a sweet spot on this video. We'll look at failure trades tomorrow and V top, V bottoms. But as we get green, green, what you want to do is as we move up, you'll want to see when the market gives a first red bar reversal. As long as we don't close two candles below my structure dots, which are my Simrico bar type, and we close back above on a closing basis, that's your entry for a sweet spot trade. Now, this one started out slow. Because this is our non-dead zone between 11.15 to 11.45. This is our dead zone. This happened at 11.25. That's why it went up, but it only went up from 02 to as high as, what, almost 06. Almost a four-point play, 16 ticks. But then we got out of the dead zone 11.45, and we went into a normal V-bottom. Now, what a normal V-bottom is... The difference between a sweet spot trade, normal V-bottom. This is where price gets into the zone, into both zones. So price actually closes two candles inside of the zone here. That negates the sweet spot trade because, remember, it's got a hold above the structured dots in reverse, which I'll show you that in a second. But this doesn't mean this is not a trade. This just means it's a normal V-bottom. Price comes down. We get a reversal close. The entry is the close of this candle. The stop initially is a low of this candle. Like I said, you can go to the middle of that candle, 10 ticks, 12 ticks, 15 ticks, depending on how you want to do it on your ATM. Market takes off. Market starts rallying. I type in the room at 1.26 p.m. A lead. This is very leading. It's not after the fact stuff. We can see these before they come up when the market likes to go vertical. The reason I typed at 1.26 p.m., possible sweet spot trade in the live room, I saw a red bar reversal. As soon as that red bar reversal came in, I immediately looked at my structure dots. My structure dots told me that my structure dots right here were at, and you know these way ahead of time, at 5,600. So they start printing at 12.51.34. We do not get pulled into the market till 12.55. 12.51. Pulled in at 12.55. About four minutes a heads up on this trade. So I said possible sweet spot deck on deck because we got the first red bar reversal. As long as I don't close two candles below, on a closing basis, below these structured dots, I wait for the first reversal candle. 
the first reversal candle comes in I'm looking for it to close there's your entry the high of that candle the hard stop like I said the maximum hard stop you need on this is a 20 tick maximum 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 hard stop a lot of traders like using half the bar size of 10 ticks to 12 ticks some I like to use 15 myself but a lot of you traders like to use smaller which is fine the market takes off entry is 093 quarters I know on this fill specifically we remember this fill a lot of you traders got filled with slippage on this at 10 a quarter 10 a half we get a two tick to three tick slippage I know specifically on this trade it was a 10 a half entry because of the slippage 10 a half entry market just explodes as high as 32 move 20 S&P points 20 S&P points with a hard 12 to 15 tick hard stop initially nice reward to risk market starts moving back up again we're green green market comes up we get our first red candle that forms again this is these are the counter trend traders that are coming in the market again against dual trend zone we close two candles below sweet spot is off this is a normal v bottom we close a green candle up green candles up this is a 20 tick rinko there's your entry right there plus or minus a couple ticks 56 18 50 stops a little of the candle or the middle of the candle if you want market explodes up moves another 10 points market comes up again market still rallying we got green green structure dots are way ahead of time we get a major heads up on structure dots comes right down to it sometimes they'll come right, right down and stop right to the tick or within a couple ticks of it sweet spot held doesn't close more than two candles below structure holds there's your entry market explodes up then we go into a normal V bottom so it's the same type of setup once again if you look at a short it's a big short side setup that I called out in the room again so in the morning some of you traders in here earlier I said sweet spot on deck why the transition phase was right here we went from a chop phase because why was it a chop phase because we turned green green to the first green red dot formed here the great thing about this algorithm is it keeps you out of chop markets chop markets is where traders tend to fail the biggest upgrade I've had with the system are these dual trend filters because it keeps your mind right right here is your trend field that's a chop zone there is a way to trade this chop zone called a failure trade I'll go with that in tomorrow's video when you guys are in the room there's a way to play this move down and Momo trades we'll go over that but I'm specifically looking for the sweet spot trade to show you this is when markets like to go vertical the markets moving down we talked in the room early in the morning some new traders that were in how I was looking for as soon as that green bar formed I said hey sweet spot trade on deck it doesn't close two candles above it gives a red bar reversal the fill was 60 and the market just fell apart went as low as 36 all right it just got cranked pretty hard 24 S&P points lower highs lower highs lower highs lower highs lower highs red red we had several momentum trades in between here but that's a sweet spot trade I'll show you how to trade momentum when these yellow candles come up these liquidity grab trades these are sweet spot trades that finish it off at the end but you're already short up here because it just got it was getting cranked all right that's a sweet spot trade that's how we trade it now we're coming into today's trading let's take a look at price action today today we have a sweet spot setting up where would be my buy setup immediately I know where structures got a hold it takes a half a nano of a second to realize right there's my structure structure at 25 on this retracement if I'm gonna have a sweet spot trade we're gonna to have to look for a reversal at that level right there okay yeah Derek I'll help you in one second let me close this video off and I'll get you I'll get you done here in one sec bud so 56.25 
would be the entry on the sweet spot setup as we speak, as we're coming into the Fed minutes come at 2 o'clock this afternoon. We're good to go. That's a sweet spot trade.